Hello. Welcome back. Hey. How are you all doing? You look lovely tonight. Or the afternoon or the morning, depending on what time you're watching. Wherever this, if you, you are. It live or VOD. Wherever you are, you're looking dashing. Um, specifically, yeah, I'm always. going to call out that cave guy in chat. What a dapper boy. <laughs> Just shout out to that cave guy. That cave guy. <laughs> Absolute gamer. All right, so Des, today, before we get hideously off track and off topic, what is the main focus of our world building discussion today? Well, the main focus of the world building discussion today is something that came up lightly last week, but it's the War of the Gods, specifically on the Draplin side. So we're going to learn a lot of new information about Quentos today. There's a lot mm -hmm. that's going to come up and there's going to be a, a lot that could be needed to go into more detail but we're going to try and go over some of the major plot points where maybe make a few conflicts because this is this is yeah. deep history for the setting this is a set time yes. period that even when the first game started in this world there was mm -hmm. no games played in this period of history it's kind of yeah. like the backdrop for and, the setting yeah and not only is it deep history it's deep history on the other side of the world so it it's like an extra level of uh <laughs> of how deep it is but it forms such an important part to the development to the historical development of the world both in terms of just the in, in a very material sense but also in terms of the mythology of the setting as well um it also is such a sort of deviation of because of this yeah. like, it, i don't think there's a campaign that's gone by that hasn't <laughs> shan's revolting <laughs> Yeah, but there there is a lot of knock-ons based on the War of the Gods. Every campaign we've played in, we have seen small consequences, whether it's just based on locations where certain mm -hmm. races live now, based on it, or certain gods in power, certain gods' motives and how they act after it. Like in Quentin yeah. Journey, we saw a little bit. I think there's a, a direct well, knock-on in Quentin Journey. Can do you? Yeah. Hey viewer, can you can you tell the direct knock-on of the Quentin Journey of what it was? Can you tell Raph? Direct to the party, there is an effect because of the War of the Gods in the Corinthian Journey. There's in the Corinthian Journey. There's, I mean, the, I mean, there are Middle. actually quite a few. There are quite a few, which I can, I can break down some of them. Number one, a big one, being one of the player characters, being Lyba. Um, two of the player characters. Two of the players. Also, yeah, I was going to get into that. Aura, Shadow Fade. How did the Shadow Fade get to Quenthos? By the, the uh, Eye of Ruin. Another yeah, big connection there. So without those, without their, their respective gods, also half of uh, Velfira as well, her, her grandparents, the ones that she spent most of her childhood with, were descendants of the Firewalkers, people that came over and which settled in Rindleton area. Um, no, it's wild. I, can't, I know Nux knew very little bit about their backstory of their parents and all that came over from that side, but it's actually an unknown connection that we had that both of you were like second third generation refugees from the war of war of the gods mm -hmm. you know? yeah which played into when i wrote film fever's back so this is this is getting into quentin genesis um well quentin genesis season one season. um but into Quen into quentin journey is with writing film Fira, i mentioned that in terms of part of her desire to um come a night and sort of progress down that aspect of it came from the stories of the other side of the world that were told to her, they've been passed down through her family of these great figures of the past, of these great celestial warriors that sort of fought and sort of protected humanity from the eye of ruin and his people. Like, it, like there, there was these stories which just created her desire initially for that. Yeah, um, so I think the eye of ruin was we really a Pokemon for Velfira that we never actually got to see. Yeah. That would be a really curious. How did Velfira then feel about Aura being a Shadow Fae? Well, or did she have that was different that? that was that was so far removed in a sense um as well, she also that was very much anything of her lineage it was lineage and aura as well presented very much as the the face side of in terms True. of her connection to the kind of um queen of man magic and all of that um very much that over overrode any connection to the shadow fate as a race and their connection to the Eye of Ruin. Um, so for Vel, there wasn't really a direct, direct, um, direct connection yeah. like she made in her mind, especially several generations removed. Yeah, um, about three. Yeah, sorry, it does. Um, 
also just said, hey, Vajik, great time to jump in. We're actually talking War of the Gods <laughs> and how that's affected some of the characters in Corinthian Journey, because it's probably the easiest place to start. So I know that's probably one of your biggest parts of the story that you've always enjoyed. So it's a great, great time to tune in. How are you doing mm-hmm. today? Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think in terms of other one, I mean, there's, there's a lot, but in terms of other ones, what was the one of the ones in your mind in terms of knock-on effects? Um, the biggest one was Liber, obviously. Liber is yes. literally a part of what, one half of what keeps the the storms churning in the ocean around Quintos that stops the war of mm. the gods, what they believe would be spreading, obviously, um, over to this other yeah. side and the, the damage that was caused by it. Fortunately, Libra obviously passes away. The I won't go into detail of what happens to the Trident after he yeah. passes away long term. I was going to there is always the hope you. that we do another Quentian journey season. Um and yeah. there's also I'm I know everyone I was going thinks, to ask you do you think that we'll revisit that whole plot line of the two halves of the trident and they're like the individuals that, that, that essentially are them? Um, what, like, is, 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 that, is that a storyline? Is that a plot that we we'll revisit? It is actually. So originally the plot point was meant to be part of Liber's epilogue is the trident would pass down to Liber's children. So... Fortunately, that uh-huh. never came um, to be. Um, so what, so like, did it sort of choose a successor or did the Far Walker, in a sense, choose a successor for it to go to? Or like... Um, that's something that I can't really talk about. It, it is obviously our hope and dream to eventually do a Quentin Journey Season 2. It is yeah. definitely down the line, don't know when, don't have confirmed dates, don't have confirmed story, very little I can talk about it, but it is something we want to do. And mm-hmm. I don't know... For some reason, I know we have a blue chieftain that came with us. His name was Merrick. I know the other blue chieftain. I have to go and check the vods. I believe their name also began with an M, but I'm currently blanking on it. And unless Mercestio? you deep reach the the tiefling that had Mercestio, a part of Mercestio is a blue tiefling. There, that's all I'm Mercestio saying. is a blue tiefling, but um, yeah, Liber was a sealed artifact, which is probably yeah. the main difference between that half of the like they're part of a trident, and then there was another bit within um another part of something within the the blue tiefling that we'd met uh, mm-hmm. only through sendings and such and dreams of liber is there was moments that they they weren't like liber in the sense that they weren't an awakened artifact as much like they i believe mm-hmm. they did lose some of their memory but it's part of the lineage of these things that they do pass down because the races, even elves, even the longest lives lived elves are mortal. Mm-hmm. It is a burden. It is a blessing. It is a burden. Liber was different in the fact that he was literally a manifestation of the the Tome of the Dawn Watcher with a part of the Trident. Yeah. And I believe it is the other side was the Hammer of the Arkhammer, the other of the three brothers mm. with another part of the Trident, another thing to seal it, which was a really big part of what was between these people is a lot of like connection so yeah th- but the thing there's... is at the end of the day they're still mortal and it has to pass down eventually mm. but even Liber, when he became a mortal form it would eventually have to pass through him that was the entire yeah. story so the fact that so... Liber died actually has some pretty heavy consequences mm. um, for... which is honestly actually sorry sorry go ahead I was going to say, that's actually another really interesting thing, which we can go into a little bit after, is these artifacts that have been given or almost manifested a mortal form and are acting out like a life is more, but they are these artifacts of great power from uh, the gods, which I think is just a really interesting thing. In Clinthos, there are obviously at least two of them. Maybe there's more. Um, carrying there down these lineages. There are, there are more, so I, I won't confirm all that there is, because it's actually mm. either the plot point for a future campaign I'd love to. I would love for this to be Quentin Journey Season 2, because I always, even from the very beginning, I had thoughts of expanding Quentin Journey and making others. Mm. And you have the artifact, but you also have agents that want the two halves of the world to, to conjoin. They want the unification. And there is people actively hunting these. Mm-hmm. So, Lavoka, I won't say by who or by when. I imagine Lavoka will come under siege for Liber's grave. Okay. 
Um, or maybe yeah. just be, maybe a grave robber, depending on how good it's defended. Um, yeah. But this may, yeah. depending on whether this becomes a, a season two, which I would love, I would love to do a season two. It's mostly just it's up here until until further notice. Um, but mm -hmm. there's a lot that could come of it. I think those early characters of Quantian Journey were so so entertaining. But as mm -hmm. the third knock on we have is we had Nox. We had Nox who was a changing who literally would not be there if the War of the Gods did not happen. Yes, if the that is two a good sides point. had stayed separate the entire time, Nox would never have come. If the far if the Which is... Walker did not join. Yeah. Which is quite interesting to look back on then, because really in that campaign there was only one player character that wasn't directly connected in a sense, but was a product of, of a knock on of the War of the Gods, which yeah. is Eleanor. Because Eleanor All the other ones were directly him. involved. Yeah. Which is actually quite interesting. Um how that we ended that sense. just unintentionally but then if you think of it eleanor would have never hired xerikos so to speak to have mm -hmm. a guide for the outside world so the events of it, of lavoca the story of lavoca would would never have had the vefalier vanguard no no they may have had someone who was far more capable and the vefalier far vanguard. more capable far more competent and just better looking <laughs> all in all <laughs> uh look there's one thing you can't put that party on uh, there were definitely, definitely a lot of good-looking folks in that body. Oh yeah, look, they they definitely had a, a, a high charisma between them all. But um, again, even in Kingslayers, we now see some knock-on of the War of the Gods. We see mm -hmm. bit by bit now. Um, so Fajik just donated five dollars to ask: Does the Ooh. rumbling of Mount Eremit affect the deities? Um, it affects the Firewalker. That was only of the fact that if you guys had failed that campaign, the Firewalker would have had to intervene um, to protect their main city of Seal. It would have caused a lot of destruction on that that continent, that little that island, not a continent, so to speak, but that island um, would have caused a lot of destruction there. But you guys didn't, so overall it does not affect the gods too much. Not the old gods anyway. Um, you did put a bit of work into stopping the Flameborn, but you did not destroy the Flameborn, obviously. That wasn't part of the the story so put a hamper in some plan uh hamper in a few plans but haven't quite uh squashed that cult out but did good work yeah um, uh, but as we see in i'm trying to think what are the major consequences of war of the gods that we see in in well, that's quentin journey because interesting because there is quentin massive, journey the middle of lake heads not quentin journey uh, well yes in, in Kingslayers, yeah, I'm just trying to think, in regards to the party itself, in regards to the characters, not much. Nowhere near as much. Um, I don't think at all. Which is quite... I don't really think at all. I, I can't really think of a character that has a, a, a connection, like or, or like a, a product of a knock-on effect of it. Um, uh, yeah, but a big one is obviously the Eye of Ruin, like, reaching Lake Hesfire is a very real um course of action for us to take um in order to, to, to understand these rituals that were, that were told of us by uh, Tevin. um yeah, there's there is that aspect i don't think there's overall too much um no no there isn't um, isn't the main effect of the war of the gods the ascended deities no um the uh, the war of the gods happened on the other side of the continent the i think you're thinking of the 300 year war between the yachtans yes. and the and humanity where humanity. the gods yeah. ascended um but unfortunately no not yet there is it hasn't quite yet been a war of the gods between the ascended deities um but as we we're saying we've also seen probably one of the biggest knock-ons so far it's featured heavily in a few campaigns mm. kinasi's hut we know that to be the the matron of the woods yes. and the spirit form it has Which appeared i i just i i need the hut I need the hunt to appear in, in this campaign here at some point. I think it would be such a a beautiful moment for Callus India to have would be that. I just to have that to have uh Kinasi's heart reappear in this campaign. Um so, but yeah, that is actually a very good is that written is... to appear in Kingslayers eventually. Yes. Um, um did the Fire Walker sure. come over after? After I think the Thrain Steer War, I believe the Fire Walker came over in like 450 during. New Dawn. 
No, not 450. One second. Um, no, that's not right. That's, that's, that's the current day. Um, one second. I can look it up. Um, I think, it, no, maybe 350 new done. I know it's pretty, pretty quick after. Um, I'll pull it up. Um, I think there's loose dates for it, but we saw stuff set up. Uh, well, it, it's when it's when it began. Uh, he like he started, like he fled. He started his journey as the war began. Um, basically, bringing yeah, he started a journey. Followers. Yeah. So the Firewalker first stepped foot in Quentos in three hundred and fifty New Dawn. So that was mm-hmm. that was set. Uh, he arrived one hundred and fifteen years before the events of a Quentian journey took place, um, which is how we saw Belfair's grandparents remembering stuff from before. The before times and the times where you know their old homes within uh within the Drapidan side. It's not that unfresh, but the it's difficult to give a one to one ratio of time that he fled because it wasn't a snap quick journey. It took many, many years, decades. Yes. There's no confirmed time of how and, long it took to actually flee. Yeah. And and tra- traversing the elemental planes there was a time, like, time didn't flow quite as normal for that journey. It, yeah, it, it wasn't a, a clear-cut journey as such. But yes, to answer the question, the Firewalker came over uh, to... Because the Yeltons previously had a... Um, Raf is also a mad genius. Uh, Raf is an extreme... I will say this, Raf is an extremely intelligent world builder, and ever since I got him to start helping with some of the world building for the setting, it's uh, specifically some of the Quanto stuff, some of the history it's, and like uh, like conflicts that have happened with certain kingdoms. Uh, Raf helped severely with a lot of writing for Serok, for the war in Mantara Theer. Um, there's been a quite bit. But yeah, Raph and a few other bits and pieces scattered. Yeah, just scattered like throughout there's... it, so you'll find my handiwork. Yeah, a little bit. Obviously, I'll, I'll desapproved, but or desapproved. I would say probably, yeah, probably the most notable or pressing uh, one would, would be the whole Mantara Thea conflict and Mantara Thea yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah um, I, I gave Raph. I was like, "There's a conflict happening here. Write, yep. write me some history right for it." Is. And then I added a bit on for like specific conflicts I had in mind. I named the region Mantara Thea based on some of the stuff Raph had provided. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, but I say the biggest one is um, the biggest one that Raph did would probably be Serok, actually. The not the goddess, the city. Um, yes, did a lot the of city. Work on that for me. Um, yes, yeah, Des was basically like you design Serok. I want to have like I gave you parameters three for districts. What we had before. Yeah, you're like, I want three districts, I want, like, so many landmarks within it, but besides that, run wild. This is the general theme of the city, it should be a yeah. shit place. Then Design I it. receive it, and like, I put a stamp on it, and then I put it on the world. Yeah. I get Raph to put it on the world anvil. Um, yeah, and then... I don't as refer we... to Raph as a lore gremlin, personally, absolutely. What yes. does that make, Kate? A combat genius. <laughs> the combat guru of the, uh... And a mechanical... Of the group. A, with mechanical prowess, yes. yes. Yes, actually, that is a good term. Cade is the mechanical engineer, uh, but not a qualified mechanical engineer, but a mechanical engineer nonetheless. Yes. Um, Cade is definitely one of the one of the best people when it comes to writing subclasses, sub races. Any yeah, sort of, a lot of help like from from mechanic and design aspect is fantastic. Yeah. Um, that? Absolutely, a lot of good ideas in that in that regard. That, that's one of the beauty the, the team that is myself. Raph and Cade, we can cover a lot of the three pi- the three pillars of of the design aspects of our world with Cade helping with mechanics and some stuff like the College of the Brass Lungs, which myself and Cade worked tirelessly on, which is on our Patreon, which is super cool. Um, but Cade is extremely good to work with. Cade, even we saw with... Um, I'm going to praise Cade a little bit. It's also on the Patreon. Cade made a subclass, basically, for a fighter that's entirely devoted to stress and played um odan in our our raiders of yasgrin after var died um <laughs> and that went up on the patreon as well i believe um so kade is really really good at that and it's been a pleasure and we're definitely going to be working with kade a little bit a little bit more and um, there's a couple couple stuff coming soon but we're still a little eh. ask us still in a little bit before ask us in November. yeah ask us in November. but look there are a lot of projects 
on the there, horizon. That, that is the thing. We've got even a couple named ones. We have Quentin Journey Season 2 Possible Project. We have, um, I think, two to three unnamed projects unannounced. Um, Look, I think, honestly, with one of them, we could just say a name and we could just, like, have it there. No one will understand it, but we just say a name. Um, and no one will even know. Um, Fajik says, I should go check out the Patreon and not just give you money for Patreon and never get a Patreon. There's a lot of cool shit on the Patreon. I agree. You should look yeah. at the Patreon. You know, if you're paying for it, you may as well make full use of it. But um, let's talk about our knock-on effects. So I think the biggest one of Quentin Journey is um, is the is the I've Ruins aspect if the Lake Headspire route. Plus, yes. there's a lot of Derapidant influence full stop. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is interesting because Derapidant despite being so removed, has played quite a considerable uh, role in shaping Well, uh, humanity Quentos was brought to continent. Quentos from yeah. Derapidon. It's like they, they did start I am there. My boy that's the where God. the, the gods originally started. The, yeah. the Dying God brought them over, and that was a lot of work put in by the Dying God and did a great job for that, but it's uh, R.I.P. You know, it happens. So we've talked a lot about the knock-on effects, but let's talk about the, the inciting... It, inciting incident that was yes. the war of the gods because which we've the war already... just doesn't start anywhere we've talked about no. it a little bit we talked about a little we've bit talked about it. and we talked about a little bit when we discussed the whole um uh shattered towers of uh well, the tower of the abyss is our corvette i love that we're now used enough to these names where you can just pull them it's very like Zarthel, Zar Corvette, like yeah yeah like i honestly I... anything can you recite the solar system in order Oh, in order. Oh, fuck. Uh, shit. Um, <laughs> Can you do it? I know it. Okay. Looking at anything. I, I know. I know it goes Cirrus Zakoved. Cirrus Zakoved. <sighs> Let's. I'll let you know. Quentos is fourth. Quentos is fourth. Cirrus is good. Is it Iberillion? I it think is. it's Iberillion. Okay, Ivril and then uh, Quentos. Yeah. Then it's, I can't remember if it's either Sleepless Dreams or Fairies first, number five. Can you remember the names? Uh, um, Vitruzian. That's and the Fairies. That's the Fairies, yeah. And then Land of Sleepless Dreams is Zarthel. Okay, so you're saying Fairies five, Sleepless Dreams six? Yes. Okay, then what's seven, eight? Um, then it goes Land of Angels, and then it goes Great Machine, and then it goes Shifting Sides, of, uh, Shifting Sides of Chaos. Like the last few are easy. It's just that middle section there, uh, where so it's like even really were perfectly right. But flip Zarthel and Vitrizian. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good. Um... Not bad. Not bad. I'm, look, I'm, I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, uh, Kate say? You have the perfect chance to list our own solar system because Des never specified. I didn't. Um, <laughs> that's just Rap. Rap's brain lives in Quintus as a system. It's like. It's just like... But um, yeah. So we've seen a little bit, but there's there's so much influence of Drapton. So let's talk inside the incident. So mm -hmm. there was many years of prosperity, and the Dawn Watcher and the Matron of Wood had three children: the Arkhammer, the Eye of Ruin. And the Firewalker, the three, actually triplets, um, came about at the same time. Very close for a long time, but eventually there was outside influence from the Bloody Dame onto the Eye of Ruin that they started the war. They wanted more. The, and as we see with a lot of like nobility and stuff, it was, you know, they thought they should be the one to, to lead after their father. Like, you know, the, the great cities that were around there. There was so much that they thought they did not get the respect they deserve you know all this whispering in their ear from the bloody dane caused mm. yeah which was also done in a sense because as we know the bloody dane was um was basically ousted f from zarkoved as the like the, the like the, the prime demon lord like the most powerful it was essentially ousted from that position and one of the reasons she caused, she ended up causing the War of the Gods, was to uh, cause such a large influx of negative emotions yeah. and terror yeah. and fear. 
he wasn't um, an old one that settled on Pendos. And Kate said, I hate to love and love you and leave you, lads, but I'm going to try and get a little bit of sleep, end up playing League at 5 a.m. I'll see you for League in an hour and 27 minutes, because I know you're not <laughs> sleeping on those fresh piercings both sides. You were big, uh, big brain, get piercings on both sides, can't sleep. Um, Let's see, okay. see Good luck trying to sleep. Good, good luck trying to sleep. Um, um, yeah, but yeah, there was... so in terms of... Yeah, so I mentioned that in before the Inside Incident, I mentioned that this is actually a question. How much did the Bloody Dame have to corrupt and influence the Eye of Ruin? Like, I mentioned there was already seeds of it there, but how much did actually she have to try to push him? So there was a lot. There was a lot of, a lot of pushback because... He 100% thought and loved the Bloody Dame. It was like, mm. this is my match. You know, this will be who I'm with. They they had many children together. Many of which, some of which died. Some of, like, there's a lot of unnamed yeah. old gods that don't make the list anymore. Like, there's many that passed away. Gods of other races that we don't see anymore. That we saw this effect that caused so much conflict and s scattered the landscape. That was never the, never the intent of mm -hmm. the, the Firewalker, not the Firewalker, the Eye of Ruin. And a big part of it came down to the fact that it was, it was a war started based on the thought of a preemptive retaliation. So I have to attack before right. they do. It was like a constant, okay. like, they are coming for your creations. The hum Because remember, the Eye of Ruin is the, the primogenitor of of humans like of the of the race that is humans that i have ruined created them like this quick expanding chaotic race mm. that was there to like try and spread and populate um you know that was their creation it was like no everyone's coming for your creation like it was all these long lives like you are causing too much pain you are implanting too much hurt in the world and it's like just this constant whispering in the ear mm. um uh, for you, like, going to bed, thanks for the distraction from my depression. In the future, I need to ask you about what would occur if someone with disassociative identity disorder achieved deity via that artifact. Anyways, you're awesome. Thank you. Yeah, ask that down the line. I will, now that I know you're going to ask it, I'll put a bit of thought into it. I'll give you a better answer. Enjoy sleep. Yeah. Right. See ya. Um, but there's a lot to be said for what was uh, completely a war that would never have happened. Now that's not to say mm -hmm. a war, the a war caused by the Eye Ruin would have never happened. There is other gods that would have eventually wanted war, but most of the gods that want like original start it was like the main few bits. Uh, the Bandit King UK, Aloha, Aloha to you, Bandit King. How are you today? Hey, Bandit um, King, nice to have you. How are you doing? What's what's your Thanks day for joining us. Like? How's how's the UK doing today? I say disgruntledly as an Irish person. <laughs> Um, but no, the War of the Gods, are, I don't, I don't think that even if we look to the Horn Serpent, who was a coward god, I might add, like the fact that they became so, such a strong being is, is because all the other gods were slumbering. Um, it's very cold. Bet I'm in, I'm in Ireland. We have very, very similar climates. It is also very cold here today. Um, so it's a lot of rain today because it kind of always is, but Hey, <laughs> let's, um, you're sat in your office waiting for your next appointment. Oh, slow day, busy day. Come hang with us either way. <laughs> yeah, look, hopefully this helps speed Happy you up to, to your you. next, uh, next appointment. Uh, um, Banner King, we'll catch you up a little bit. So we have a, uh, we play in our own original setting called Quenthus. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of deep lore and we're talking about the backdrop for everything. The, the original set, like setting before any players even got to play in it was a, an event that called, that was called the War of the Gods. And we're going over the incidents and knock-on effects. We've already talked a little bit about how that affected some of our some of our campaigns so far and what it would have looked like if that never happened. But we're going through the inciting incidents and the main main power players right mm -hmm. now. And if there's anything you want us to expand further on, just shout it out in chat. Yeah, no. Very slow day because I've only came in for this appointment. Then I go home again and only one so far this week. That is a slow week, but that hey, is, at least you get to yeah. do this with some cool streams and some cool people. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> God, I haven't seen them yet, but we are what we are, a uh, bunch of nerds. 
But yeah, so as I was saying, this war never would have happened from the Ivory side. There, his brothers and the jeweled wings, like it was a lot of convincing that like, you know, human humans spread too fast. Like, because before that, like you had like his brother who did so well, he created the dwarves in his image to have a contrast to the star elves who were like, mm -hmm. you know, these more almost semi immortal races and the dwarves were so long lived, like it could live to four or 500 years old. And it was very, very well. And then you had the far walker who did not care to create, but just wanted to explore the set, the, the worlds of the realm. And then you had the eye of ruin who was people was being told your race that you've made is too short lived. It's too quick spreading. There's too much damage that, because remember humans as a race in most settings, even in ours, they spread very quickly and they've caused kingdoms to happen mm -hmm. very quickly. They cause a lot of war. It's almost in their nature, especially in our city. It's very much so in their nature. They have like, you know, not so much that we talk about it in Quento's side because there's not that correlation between humans and between humans and the ivory room, but on the Drabland side, it's like, you know, there is some humans that would be like, there is more than a small part of the eye of ruin in them. You know, for these warring races, like Sutempra would be a race that would specifically very much see themselves in their old side. That was like, they are very Eye of Ruin in some, in terms of like, yes. a, you know, a being. Um, the Bandit King says, we very rarely just happens to, it's normally built up over long periods of time. Hey, look, yeah. there's, if it's always busy, a quiet day can sometimes be nice. I hope, uh, you know, I hope the shop at least has a bit of heating and while you're in your office. Or at least I hope you've got a good coat. So there's a lot of stuff that could have been said for that. And there was a lot of the bloody yes. like I was on a planet. I saw what chaos does. People want to um oh, so Yeah, it's says said war. I wasn't sure if I read it wrong. Yeah. War of, I, really I wasn't that. sure. I wasn't I just sure. I was like, very wait. rarely happens. Uh, so yeah, war very yeah. rarely happens too. It just normally built up over a long time. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we're talking about these inciting incidents. Thank you for calling me out. Yeah. Uh, Look, so long as you bring a good coach of war though. Look, as long as you bring a good coat to war, that is important. And a spare pair of socks, at least three. <laughs> I'm glad I got a Lameo, though. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, and very good point there, Bandit. Um, it hmm. did not happen overnight. It was this constant like, convincing of the the bloody damn being like, I've hmm. seen what chaos does. You created nothing but chaos. Your creations and what they have built and these effigies in your honor. This is too fast. This is chaos. And chaos destroys planets and they will not want their planet destroyed. They will yeah. end you. They will end your people. I'm I'm curious. Was the bloody dame honest to the, um, I about to say the dying god, to the eye of ruin about her her nature in terms of her history on Zarkite Corvette and all that? Or did she pose as Oh no, she, as she, just she, like she was like, one. I came from Zarkite Corvette. They, they never knew, they never suspected that she never suspected that she wasn't the mother of the mm. abyss the first first like negative emotions so to speak right. but her involvement in the shattering of the planet like this completely destruction of the, the entire ecosystem of the planet is something she denies heavily and it's like this is what chaos caused chaos will cause a destruction and mm. well she would more framed as they destroyed the planet because they could not handle chaos they, yeah. And rather than destroy the planet, they will just destroy you and your creations. You must strike first, because yeah. if you if you, you do not win this without the element of surprise. Yeah. But obviously, we know that yeah. the the bloody dame was entirely in this, just trying to be like, I I want negative emotions. I want to see Zara Corved an influx of this and cause this absolute chaos because she's just batshit yeah. crazy. She was just like, and I, I want, want to regain my position on Zark or Ned. I want to reclaim yeah. that. I want to go. Exactly. But then, uh, you know, it's built under a guise of like the all of the gods, all of the old gods bowed and laid fealty to the Dawn Watcher. It's like this was the leader. This is the leader who helped them destroy the Void Dragon and who yes. helped them settle and won the war. Now, mind you, not all of them were happy with the war with the Ons. Remember, that also killed a few of these great old ones. Mm -hmm. So, as this happens, it's like, you know, it was like, done under the guise of, I wish to take my father's throne because while we are immortal beings, ruling forever, ruling for eternity is not just. You cannot be mm -hmm. the one king forever. The crown must pass. And that's when you have yeah. people like the Dragon King and not the Dragon King, the Horned Serpent. And some people be like, I agree. 
that should not be the case. That, you know, let this be a different system. And, you know, the Dawn Watcher's like, what are you doing? You're, you are my son. You are my blood. What have I... And it just, it kicks <laughs> off, you know. It's a lot of built-up tension, a lot of small arguments and scuffles. And then eventually it's just snap, gone. It's like, okay. Where it would have started with the the first time the Eye of Rune ever actually formed their sword, the great sword that is in the midst in our world anvil, was summoned mm. of his anger and hatred, these negative emotions, very demonic. It's a demonic blade in nature. It was the yeah. Bloody Dame helped channel this energy to form the blade and struck the Dawn Watcher, albeit not killing him almost. But that started, that kicked off the war. And we saw a lot yes. of stuff come from that. And I'm interested, actually, because in, in regards to the... Never should rule forever, like species is biologically immortal, then they'd be super into corruption and civil unrest. Yeah, although I guess it also depends heavily upon the race itself that we're talking about. Yeah, and the race itself, because I think that in regards to fantasy, there's a lot of um, certain leniency towards these type of things you can take towards rather through magically um, prolonged life and races and or you know, just part of their natural biology where you can try and work around that and try and process that. But otherwise, yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, I agree. Um, Nobody should rule forever. I think that is a point that the Eye of Ruin made that was correct. But I also don't think it was ever in the Dawn Watcher's interest to actually rule forever. I think he eventually would have wanted to pass the crown. But that was never information that was, like, made public because it's, like, he was just expanding and creating it's like well there's all these civilizations and i'm sure eventually he would have wanted to pass the crown but the thing is these are great old ones these are beings made and yes they're not like these are from the dawn of time itself like yes that's that, that's that's the thing is the the dawn watcher for himself you know didn't really have um what the bloody dame was saying he, he very much had the type of thing like i may be sort of the head of the old gods in a sense but all i intend to do as in like in this position is essentially keep take a step back now yeah keep the peace and just take a step back let the world develop as it does let the world happen and watch the that's dawn it. of the signs like, of the void dragon literally as in yes it. yeah and watch the dawn of the signs of the void dragon returning um having no interest about what about someone actually controlling something but maintaining the guise of the original rule still being there, such as Snowpiercer? Yeah, I think that'd actually be quite interesting in terms of gods, in a sense, um, very much trying to construct that sort of narrative. Could be very interesting, especially if it's not exactly something like a god itself who's, uh, you know, at least tr portraying um, the well, exorcist. Someone authority. pretending to be the Dawn Watcher to rule. Yeah, someone pretending to be the Dawn Watcher to rule and keeping up that entire masquerade as such, trying to like pretending to be the Dawn Watcher and speaking as if they're the, the Dawn Watcher type of thing. Well, um, that'd be fair. That would cause a lot of conflict when that came out, but it didn't actually happen. Which is, that, that is like, such a look, cool idea. It could, it'd, be, see that in the it'd be cool. For, the plot point. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it'd be cool for something down, down the line in the future um, yeah, to see that type of. That type of plot point. Um, I've enjoyed. I think I've I've never actually used that as a plot point. It's something I've thought about a long time to set as a. Um... Yeah. So you have a god who died or something a long ago, but their assistants pretending that they still exist while controlling everything. That would be very interesting. Imagine mm -hmm. if someone did that with the dying god. Someone tried to pretend that the dying god still existed, <laughs> and still See, just callous in here. It look. It would be hard, it would be much easier with ascended deities because they don't have the same omnipotence as old gods in that sense. Like, they're not quite as eldritch horror creatures. Oh, um, God, no. Then, the, with the ascended, as, and the ascended as well, who also, have, who also have a much more of a um, mortal way of thinking about their actions as well that aren't quite as alien, you could definitely see someone pulling that off. Um, See, that's another big thing is the, the old gods of our setting they are eldritch beings they were being created hmm. by the first like the, the penultimate the ultimate being of creation that just made them to stop the ultimate creature of destruction and now they seek purpose in life now that they're the reason they were made was fulfilled you know it's mm -hmm. 
That was almost like their their reward for destroying the Void Dragon is like you can now live your life. Yes. So there's a lot there to it. Um but what we specifically saw come out of it was a war between between families. It was a like a civil war for all intent and purposes. You know, is between this one mm-hmm. sort of great house of families, there was a lot of inner conflict, you know people trying to reason i think one of the reasons why the firewalker was able to be reached out to by the eye of ruin is it was one of the first people like you know stop this madness <laughs> like let yeah. there be peace that was one of the first to reach out this and somebody tried to stay impartial in the entire yeah. thing um refreshment yes. Ooh, yes Ooh, indeed Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. glad to have you here refreshment How's your day going? That is refreshing. Um, we're playing a campaign. We're talking about the history of the campaign. We've yes. actually had this setting since late 2018, early 2019, and we're doing a little bit of a, a little bit of a history of why our gods in the very, very beginning caused a war between themselves. Um, we actually play our campaign currently called Kingsters every Monday at 12 p.m. GMT plus one, and we're 30 sessions deep. And we did a campaign previously that was uh, about 30 sessions, 27 of which were streamed. Yeah. The first three were like. Uh, in preludes that were done to get the characters in uh, like a prologue to get them used to their characters and used to the idea of streaming. Yeah, and but new group as well. Right right the campaign right as we go as well, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, updating the, the setting constantly. We have a world called Quentos, it's entirely our own, and we're working very hard on it. Yeah, if you have any questions, yeah, um, oh, yeah. I'm, new I'm really used to and I want to play some, but ain't, ain't in a game yet. My schedule is very chaotic. Uh, have you yep. tried World 20? Um, um, so the gods are angry at each other. They were, they were for a long time. The war of the gods is a lot like happened thousands of years ago now at this point. Um, and it's when did it like, I mean, not, not sorry, when did it like how long did it actually go on for? How long did it go on for? It went on for like a couple hundred years, mm-hmm. yeah, because these old ones they don't need to move quickly, they don't care for quick conflict, they you know. Well, and that's, that's that's the thing is yeah that's the thing as well like some did die but for the most part as well like it's incredibly difficult to actually kill a great old one i would actually correct you um, it's not difficult for an old one to kill an old one i mean it yeah but in terms of lot. killing in, in terms of killing them completely in that sense oh, like, like we've seen killing, like sh- complete killing the soul and body and that is something yes. that can only be done by another great old one um yeah, but I imagine it's still like difficult for them. It's not like a quick like, um, which is like one of the reasons why the Eye of Ruins Blade is so like has such a myth to it is because it is capable of killing, like it is capable of killing a god. It has Absolutely. that power to it. Um, but, uh, we got a good question there. Are there? Oh, what was that? Um, are there references to the gods family or are the gods backgrounds family big um no we actually have a pretty in-depth thing of even the family tree between them all we have everything on mm-hmm. our world anvil which is accessible to our patrons a little shameless plug there but i can we'll sh- i'll pull it up here and we can show you um so we have but yeah it's also bit, um, just 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 for new people to... coming in sorry oh, I'll say just for new people coming in, we have essentially in the setting we also have two sets of gods. We have the old gods, which are which are what we're talking about today, which are much more of just eldritch, great old one type beings that essentially besettled and became known as gods, creating life and civilizations as such. And then we also have um, the ascended or the ascended gods which are essentially a group of mortals who achieved something akin to some form of divine status. Um, exactly. The great old ones do... The main distinction is the great old ones do not require worship, but want it. The ascended gods want it and require it for their power. And um, Bandit King, thank you for the follow. That's very cool of you. We're thank getting, you. Uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, there are demigods. That is a thing. They do yes. They do have demigods. We've talked. We've actually met one in our Monday game. Uh, there mm-hmm. was a fellow called Bran, who was a demigod of a god called the, the Unshackled, Unshackled Scythe. Scythe. Um, that is also the major distinction between the great old gods and the ascended gods. Hello, Daria. The great old gods always follow hey, the there. convention of the something. So it's the Dawn Watcher, the Matron of the Woods, the Eye of Ruin. Um, <laughs> yeah, the lore power scaling is there's a lot of 
the great old gods were they're old eldritch beings that decided they wanted to be mm -hmm. gods they are extremely powerful only rivaled by the Jotuns, the Jotun giants were the one thing that was able to kill them as well. We saw that a little bit in our main campaign, Kingslayers. The god that Raph worships, the dying god, was killed. Their body, not their soul, was killed by the, the Jotuns. Shattered. R.I.P. Shattered. Yes. Um, and that's the thing is you can shatter a body of a great old one. And we talk, there's three great old ones I specifically want to talk about. The Jeweled Wings, the Mation of the Woods, and the Firewalker, not the Firewalker, the Eye of... The horn serpent that well, make up the void dragon they, is the being of utmost yeah. destruction. And they that was similar purpose to the shattering of the mm. um of the dying god. Um how about a guy that joined a god and went mad and mistook an ambassador to the respective god? That's basically Raf's character. He is a prophet of the dying god. That is yes, basically a mad he's crazy. He's mad with prophecies, and that you're literally maybe talking the end of his story if he fully goes mad and just goes on a rampage, gets cyber psychosis. Am I right? Yeah. Look, and... I've 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 always described to to Des like in terms of poetic endings. Um, uh, rap, rap for, is the, the this other world rap. builder here. Me. Yeah. Um, or as I think it's down there in terms yeah, of the nameplate on stream. Random. Bob Ross, Bob Ross. Yeah, yes, Bob Ross. I am Bob Ross. Confirmed. Confirmed. Um, that's what happened to that's Bob Ross. another person. Apparently, I am. Um, <laughs> added to the list. Yeah, rap. Um, <laughs> that rap. Um, but yeah, there's mm. we have a this the, even this family tree is not of all of the great old gods. <laughs> no, there is more than no. this. I, I don't even think this. Like, cause you'd have to go to. I'm trying to think. Is there? I know the golden pillar has yeah even so it goes more unfortunately it doesn't show all the generations so there's like there there is more but there's even ones that aren't on this family tree but it's uh mm -hmm. you know it all it all stems from two beings at the very beginning the divine observer and the the void dragon um which in which we discussed the void dragon a bit how about in the regards... singular strongest god Ooh. a zeus kind of thing that would be the void dragon, um or the dawn watcher the Dawn Watcher, because the Void Dragon is not exactly it's a disassembled. great old one in the same, um, and it's also it's it's different from the other old gods in that sense because yes. it's almost it's in its own separate being. Um, or there is another one that is probably contests the Dawn Watcher for the single strongest god would be the Dragon King, which is two halves of the Void Dragon reassembled in yes. modern modern time in our history. We talk about the Horn Serpent and the Jeweled mm -hmm. Wings, which technically they. They fused together because of campaign ramifications, and they're now called the Dragon King. And they would campaign ramifications. Would, if not, it would be a. It would depend on the conditions and the day who would win in a fight mm. between the Dawn Watcher and the Dragon King. Yeah, I mean, in in, in regards to the the Eye of Ruin and the Dawn Watcher at the start of the War of the Gods, like. How how close like on, on like what was the footing like was there even footing between the Eye of Ruin and the Dawn Watcher or was the Dawn Watcher still eclipsing the Eye of Ruin in, in regards to power and capabilities? So th that that is a interesting ma matter of fact. If if not for the fact that the Dawn Watcher did not want to kill his son, he would have won. But he yeah. never struck yeah. to kill. That was the difference. While the Eye of Ruin was trying to kill his father, the Dawn Watcher was not trying to kill his son. Mm -hmm. So, in that situation, it was fairly evenly matched because if he had gone any stronger, he would have killed his, his son and he that was never his plan. He, the entire time of the War of the Gods, he was trying to stop the Eye of Ruin, you know, always save him. Um, yeah. It was, you know, a moment of like, I, I won't give up on you. And if he had gone, you know, full out, it would have been a different story entirely. He could have probably ended it. Um, uh, the eye was yeah, worse, but the Dawn Watcher was a pacifist. Yeah, so yeah. the Dawn Watcher um, is very much so pass not so much pacifist, but um, just didn't want murder. He didn't want to kill. Mm -hmm. So he was fighting to subdue, but never going fully strong enough to... Because if he did, he, the power would overwhelm and kill his son. Because the, the Dawn Watcher was the father of the Ivory. 
Um, are there demon lords? There are demon lords. We did a entire stream on our devils and our demons. They are our two yes. planets called Osiris and Zar Corved. We went over some of the arc devils, the seven regents of Osiris, and we went through some of the higher demons of the realm. We've talked a little bit about one called the the Eye of Ruin's wife was called the Bloody Dame, and she was a great old one that landed on the planet of demons and absorbed all their energy. Yeah. Um... We can give, if you want to know more demon lords, we can dip into that very briefly and go into a few that we created during that stream. Yeah, if you're curious, um, we can go back and touch on them a little bit. I still think one of my favorites that I've always remembered is just, is just the um, uh, the Everstorm, I think it was called. Just for that name alone, it's fucking cool. The Everstorm, yes. Um, I don't know what the story is yet, but I can some bad ideas. I am full of bad Absolutely. ideas. Absolutely. Give them. That's part um, of what we Shout out the bad ideas. We, lo we always love chat interaction. Yeah, exactly. We don't do too much chatter interaction over Monday, so this is kind of the entire focus of Wednesdays to world build, hang out with you guys, and just you know get to get to know chat a little bit and get to mm -hmm. you know cross contaminate some ideas and also just to talk and answer questions about the setting. It's probably one of the main points of this. Mm -hmm. Um. So, Raf, the. Mm. War of the Gods, is there any specific questions you have for it? Anything you want to know in particular about the War of the Gods? Um, any yeah, going to, into, stuff? I was going to say, we've gone to how it started. Uh, obviously, we will eventually get to how it ended, because that's quite an event in itself. Um, but in terms of the initial few, well, probably not years, but decades, considering uh, the length of it all and the longevity and the slow nature of the Old Gods, um, but the opening decades of it, like... Was it just like a series of rapid like events of people of like different gods going on either side type of thing, or was it more of like a long drought process with the, like the Dawn Watcher and the Eye of Ruin trying to sort of gather supporters and sort of rally people around to sort of bring the gods to around okay. to their side type so of thing? The way it started was there was the inciting incident where the the Eye of Ruin said, "No, I declare myself the next king of of Quenta, so to speak." using mm -hmm. Quentus as the easy name for the planet rather than Drapnit, so. And then the following years, following decades, was beings like the Horned Serpent, it was a couple, like, a couple conflicts of the followers, like, of the humans versus the Star Elves, because that's the way a lot of the, the war mm -hmm. was fought, was between followers. Um, yeah. But then it was beings like the Horned Serpent and stuff actively participating and choosing sides, so it's like, no, I choose sides. And that's when the first many f decades of the conflict is how most of the great old gods, which I won't refer to um, since they're dead, passed. You know, these ones that mm -hmm. were allies to the Dawn Watcher being like, I, you know, the Eye of Room would have rocked up to their holds, their kingdoms where they started and be like, you need to pick a side. And they're like, well, I do not pick yours. And then the god killing blade was shunted into them. And yeah, so very much in open view, it's like, yeah, which I imagine that the Iron wouldn't have gone initially in this opening, it's gone for the most powerful of um, the Dawnwatch supporters, would have tried to pick off some of the less powerful ones that just to try and thin, thin them out a bit, show like fear and terror, so that amongst uh, the Dawnwatch's followers and try to build that reputation. Like, I have the weapon here that is capable of killing you like that, I'm not afraid of using it. Because the only ones um, that killed them before was the Yachts, they not and the Void Dragon. It's like before that they thought like, mm -hmm. well, any being of power that to kill us is no longer exists. We've yes. Done this. Yes. Um, so refreshment says a creature of mystery that was famous for its predictions, and the gods got curious and summoned it to the gods, and it predicted a god that went mad, killed many, but the god was no god. They saw it was a beast more than an elegant god. Old gods, they dead rip. Yeah, some of the old gods died. Um, just straight up dead. Um, that's a cool idea though. Um. Prophets are very, very interesting. Something we've worked with many times. Prophets normally feature in a lot of my mm -hmm. campaigns because I like that whole like of fantasy. It's like a lot of this stuff is predicted. It's like, you know, there are people who are <laughs> gifted with foresight that can see the coming events of the world unfold. Even even a uh, Raf's character in this campaign is a prophet who's seeing small things affect mm -hmm. the party. Yeah. And look, it may very well happen that Calisindra at some point will have some great prophecy to arrive upon him for like hundreds of years, maybe. Um, but he's a type of character. Like these type of characters do come up. Um, or, you know, my favorite being Wyatt. Uh, shout out to. Yeah, there was literally a prophet of the Horned Serpent who was 
like predicted the awakening you know yeah these small bits like they're they are out there and they are able to do these things and i i, I as a person I really enjoy that concept of in high fantasy and such that there is people out there that not everything in the world is random um freshman said oh, there's actually... hmm. why would god fight uh, power just equipment um, yeah power and also just ambitions like at the end of the day they still are driven by their own goals um especially in terms of the eye of ruin as to why he fought against the others is because he felt threatened and well, a few reasons one is that he felt him and his work was threatened that it was put at risk that essentially the more chaotic and less ordered nature of his creations uh, humans being amongst them that they would ultimately seek to destroy them or place them under their own control um as well as also the genuine belief that the dawn watcher should step down um, yes. um and seize also, the authority i can also add that in our setting prophets are not always 100 percent correct they see one of many futures and these futures may not always come to pass Exactly. They see likely outcomes, but many prophecies have gone unlived or yet to be lived. Which also shout out to a saint I created on the Quintal side of the world, which is literally the saint of prophecies. Um, and madness. And madness. And madness. Um, the two in our in terms often of often go hand in hand, unfortunately. Hand in the hand. Which, which, yeah, the mind which is quite yeah yeah especially with the weight of the prophecies that we've seen and in terms of everything in that regards in terms of seeing the future in any aspect um there's a lot of traumatic events that one would see um yeah, whether that you know happen. imagine if there was a pro if there was a prophet before the war of the gods seeing this having a prophecy about it that is like for a mortal mind to, to witness that is yeah, awful, uh, predictions from prophets are a coin flipping of happening. Um, I don't think so it's even that likely. Coin. I don't think it's... it's. It's not even a coin. Yeah, there are like there are many paths, and they just see one some path, prophecies are ten percent chance of happening. Some are, you know, five percent chance. Some are, you know, some are only likely to occur if many, many unlikely things happen. It's, mm -hmm. you know, trying to use them as warnings to be like these situations can't come to, and even then there'd be some prophecies that like. I have a prophecy of disaster, but it's almost self-fulfilling. Like if you tried to follow that prophecy to stop it, it would be what causes it. And mm -hmm. it could be a dice mm -hmm. roll. Could just it is D and D after all, so anything can be completely yeah, into, like a D one hundred, you know, a D one hundred roll. You know, one percent if you don't want a five percent, it's a D twenty roll. Mm -hmm. uh, but one but prophecy yeah, so, in theory could destroy the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think. But yeah, so think going back to the your character has actually had prophecies of the world's destruction. Um. Yes, you know. I've, I've put, put that in there a bit in terms of not so much which have come up necessarily. Like, there's been a few in terms of large scale dest destruction and stuff thinly veiled in there. Um, but I very much act in Carson his mind, at least, and in the backstory I, I've written for him, that he has seen apocalyptical events come to pass, which also Absolutely. drives him forwards with his own uh, mission to restore the Dying God um yeah so just 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 to go back a bit on to the war of the gods um i imagine that in these initial few years as well like there was a lot of confusion amongst the gods as to what was happening and why um they weren't yeah. privy to all of the information and then trying to piece that together a lot of them wouldn't have even known what side to go with because yeah a lot of remember they were just off the back of a war with the yacht and giants who had killed many many um um many different gods died um yeah. said, do the personalities of the gods drastically different and if so i guess in difference of a goal yeah they are vastly different in goals not a lot of the old gods the the great old gods their personalities differ wildly some of them are benevolent some of them are mm -hmm. malevolent benevolent um malevolent um and seek to destroy some of them seek to create some of them seek just to wander there is no two that would be exactly the same yeah some of them seek to rule in a benevolent, 
benevolent way. Some others seek to rule as a ruthless tyrant that sees themselves as being better than better than those that they rule over. They're yeah. lesser races. Absolutely. Um, so we're just seeking yeah. genocide all the elves because elves can ascend to godhood in a sense. <laughs> not to name um, names. Not to name names, Horn Serpent. But yeah, so I also I want to talk about as well, one thing I want to touch upon is the impact of the War of the Gods on, uh, well, humanity, but mortal races as that populated the world and which had built civilizations by that point. Um, Remember, that I point there was no I countries, so to speak. There were cities no. ruled by gods. Yeah, and I imagine that it was probably, in some aspects, probably more developed than where the world you know, Maybe, became. Yeah, absolutely, magic um, was much more prevalent. Because, well, magic, as, as we know, one of the effects of being around old gods is that magic grows exponentially more powerful in their presence. Uh, for like for mortals and such tapping into it, there's very much like the uh, the lines become blurred between the weave of magic and everything and material. Um, so I imagine that elves there, are there, there was a lot of this. Um, touch upon Chala, but so elves are taboo. I yeah, so yeah, in half of the world, since our world is split into two halves, ones that the great old gods are able to access and one that they're not. On the side that is further in history because we, we have two sides of the world we have Durapidin and Quentos we've played in Durapidin up to a point where the two sides of the world meet and now we've gone over to playing Quentos and trying to get up to where the two sides of the world meet in Durapidin that's where the Dragon King has actually genocided all the elves and there it is not a playable race for players mm -hmm. anymore um, and to answer is there a god of time yes I believe so there is a god of time I think um, I think I so. Get it for you. Um, yeah, there is well, the Sombra Rest, the old Goddess of Slumber. Yes, and the Sombra of Rest, that's it. Yes. Uh, which is, is a god that we'll get into later. It's because god they played a very because important they role. It. They were pivotal, pivotal in the end of the War of the Gods. And so yes. we'll get to all the gods um, effect at the end. But yeah, going back into discussing, uh, like, for the mortal races, it, it would have come to have this era and this all that they've known is this era of prosperity and of progress of these great civilizations and, and cities that have been constructed of these great works of magic and of art that have been built to see it crashing down it would have been like it, would, it wouldn't have been an, an apocalypse for them to it see these beings the these the beings of just power of yeah these beings whose power they cannot match essentially leveling the world around them in their fights with the, like the amount of power that they wield it like whilst that they would have fought against other supporters and such if they ever came across um or were in the vicinity of two old gods fighting it they didn't stand a chance like it would have been horrific yeah, for was. most of the most of humanity of the mortal races that existed there yeah, but this is also remember we talked back then they were like mortals were not capped at ninth level spells at that stage no there were spells that could level cities like you know not spells that could fell a god but spells that could slow a god mm -hmm. and if that's all that they were worthwhile in doing their life for the cause if yeah yeah absolutely we saw a little bit in the history of our current setting like where we're on right now they they tried to access higher level magic to sever the top of a mountain to drop it on a on a battlefield and it killed nine of the ten mages mm -hmm. that tried to cast it you know that's one thing in our setting is spells of higher than ninth level they are possible but they um they will most likely kill the caster um, mm -hmm. and slow the gods 100 percent will not backfire it, look it, it they, they were giving their life for a being that they knew to be utmost pure in their mind, utmost correct, mm -hmm. you know. Which is quite quite tragic as well. Like a lot of the these mortals that would have given their lives in this war wouldn't have even found out if, if they were on the wrong side of it at all. They just did as their deities commanded yeah. without any real understanding of... Well, what was going on at all? Moment. It's like every 
if a god created a race, they're almost like a sleeper agent for their god. We saw it when we did a pre-stream game called The Fall of Bex, where mm -hmm. the Horned Serpent summoned themselves in the sky and yes. took control of all the dragonborn in the area because it's mm -hmm. like their free will was something that was granted to them. But also but was... that as well, like the fall of Bex would have been happening constantly. Like cities. that's the type of thing, like yeah. that, that type of event for cities would have been happening all the time. So it would have become a matter of, for those that weren't like, capable of casting like extremely powerful magics or extremely powerful champions of the gods type of people for the majority of the just the population it would have been you know it would have been a survival horror essentially yeah it, it yeah like you it know, would have just been a matter of and, you know. yeah it but would have just been a matter of like... trying to do something to escape this chaos try and find some way to survive or even in the more fucked up sense like especially of the bloody dame <laughs> If you also remember the Dawn Watcher, he did not want to kill. But if you mm -hmm. send enough waves of mind controlled humans that are going to just try and kill his followers, the Star Elves, they have to react. Because mm -hmm. yeah. while there is p mages and champions out there that have power that can slow the gods, if you send enough, enough people at them, just sheer numbers of force. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. And especially when one side's not trying to fight to kill, that becomes a an uphill battle very quickly. Because yeah. they're, they're, you force their hand to kill these followers who can't control their mind. They're well, that's that's something else as well. Like I imagine that they would have come like after sort of the first few decades almost, or like like after the first century even, most of the large mortal armies that would have been there would have disappeared by that point. Yeah, the, like humanity almost disappeared with them. Like that's the problem. It, yeah, it, well, it, it got close to a point. That's why a lot of humanity was sent, like you know, to run with the Firewalker. It's like this, this is not, this is dangerous, and it became like it divulged. There's like some of the fights were, um, you know, with dragons sent by the dra the Horned Serpent. Mm -hmm. um, so. Refreshment says, wait, do you hear that? I feel like we're getting baited into something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? What are we, what are we gonna be oh, getting? Oh, refreshment has followed. Thank you. That's very cool. Thank Ooh. you for following. Uh, we Thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for hanging with us. Yeah, thanks for talking. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for vibing. Um but yeah, as you said, a lot of humanity goes. That's and the sheer amount of souls lost is what caused the intervention. Of like, mm -hmm. remember there was many like even the stone dwarves at that stage fled underground because they they're gonna die. Yeah, and yeah. we saw the intervention of five gods specifically um, that were brought into existence by the divine observer to stop this madness, to put it all to yes. thing. And those were the gemstone heart goddess of dragons, gemstone dragons specifically, the Albright goddess of alchemy. The Frozen Flame, God of the Eternal Winter. Then the Unshackled Scythe, God of War for the Sake of Peace. And the Somber Rest, Goddess of Slumber and Time. These five mm -hmm. single-handedly stopped a war of the gods between, you know, close to a hundred, you know, well, at the end of it, only maybe like 30 Great Old Ones, 40 Great Old Ones lived. But at yeah. the time when they first went in, it's like, they, this is a war between beings that were about to, you know, for the sake of like, I will blow up this planet rather than lose kind of mentality. It's like, if I don't win, no one will. Yeah, exactly. But like on such a large scale, it's terrifying. Um, yeah. And because you also need to remember that I imagine through most of the fighting as well, the old gods would have been conducting it in their eldritch forms. Yeah, they fight old in these forms. forms in their so true forms. You would, have, you would have seen these sort of Lovecraftian eldritch horrors fighting Flashing it out. Sky. And you're just, just watching there like, yeah, I'm, I'm not meant to be part of this shit. I'm, I'm definitely, I can't do shit here. Um, I think <laughs> terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. And I think what would have almost been equally as scary is when 
the parts of because I imagine there would have been confrontations, and this is something I want to discuss. Confrontations. I imagine there would have been at least large one, at least one large battle between the jeweled wings and the horned serpent and their dragons. Like there would have been Absolute a clash at some point. Lately. There would have been a slash which in would the sky have been where you epic. would have seen all epicness of the full ranks of chromatic and metallic dragons clash in the sky while these eldritch abomination forms of a chromatic and metallic dragon in the sky clash above just trying to eviscerate the other beat i was like you know it's just the war yeah. was so clear cut drawn lines by the end of it then the war of the gods ends very almost yes quicker than it ever started Mm. the but goddess then, of time literally snaps time it's like no yes. mortal lives are going to die now and then the god of eternal winter literally throws every mortal in in the realm it's like no no one this is no longer you've created these mortals these mm -hmm. are your responsibilities now we stop um mm -hmm. and then we had some such like the albright goddess of alchemy using runes and alchem alchemical concoctions to make divine seals for various gods to to yeah. try and try and make them to the point where they can be affected by the somber rest to put their physical form into eternal slumber while the albright um albright severs the the soul and body while we have the gemstone heart making innumerable amounts of gemstone dragons mm -hmm. to fight both sides both good and bad sides of it be like no no one is fighting we are your enemy now no more fight between all of you while we go and seal you all it's like the smallest faction ends up coming and rocking yeah. up and being like, this is over. Yeah. See, I'm curious as well, when they rocked up in terms of the Quali Gods, as they became known. Yes. Um, were there some of the old gods that aligned themselves and were... <laughs> yeah, by that stage, they'd all like, they gone to their sides. They size, but the main thing is, there was a few that would have tried. I think, for example, that the... The Dawn Watcher would have beseeched them and be like, please end mm -hmm. this. And like, you know, if you're being sent by whatever created us, because remember, they don't know. And they're like, whatever created us to stop this, I was created with a purpose and I know what that feels like. Help me stop yes. this. And they would have said, no, we are sent to seal you all away. And there would have been some gods like the Dawn Watcher who's like, okay, I accept my fate. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. If, if, if ending yeah. this means none of us have a physical form anymore so be it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know there would have been gods that tried to fight but you know it's kind of like gods that were specifically designed to kill the void dragon did so with ease and gods that were specifically designed yes. with the purpose of ending the war of the gods did so with ease yeah yeah you know it's they they did many things and you know, the, the greatest military tactician that has ever or will ever be in the sake of 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 Quentos as a planet was the Unshackled Scythe. It is the being of utmost creation designed a tactician so perfect that they could end any war. But it's mm -hmm. it was only for the sake of it was this one conflict. To this realm. Yeah. It was for one conflict and one conflict only. Yes. Um which is an interesting point because I want to discuss the creation of gods during this conflict, specifically for this conflict, such as the Storm Saber, who was essentially their primary purpose became to act as the foil for the Eye of Ruin, as a martial god and a warrior god to be able to combat the Eye of Ruin in these fights, who someone who could actually. Be the shield uh, for the Dawn Watcher side directly standing against the Eye of Ruin. Yeah. So you have you see so you have some being formed. You fight his brother, time. mind you, his older brother. Yeah. Yeah. Stormsaber exactly. Is so you, so you, yeah. So you have these guns being devised, trying like during the war itself, trying to assist in the whole thing. Yeah, and you the, the um, I've heard who made many had many children with the Bloody Dame who were all made with the intent purpose of trying to further his claim and f like further his army because 
you know, these elders, they're like, obviously it doesn't work the same as like, you know, nine month pregnancy is spit out a kid. Mm -hmm. It's like they're willing other eldritch beings into existence, figuring out how this works and creating beings of destruction and the match with the Dawn Watch are trying to create beings of protection. And we even saw in this time period, a, a human, a star elf so gifted with magic that the old gods saw her and said, you have a mastery unbefitting any mortal, so you must rise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it is the Which only is... known full ascension. I was going to say though, but and this is something I've always thought in my mind. I imagine that they're that almost as as a means of trying to fill their ranks. There would have been numerous ascensions of elves during the war to try and bring some more support to each side on both sides. Um, they except, did not except last very long. Most of yeah, the only one that lasted was the, um, the Lunar Glaive. Um, and also, I will, she I is the add only on one the, who made it. The ascension of Star Elf to Great Old God. Like, you're literally twisting a mortal form to an Eldritch Abomination. Mm. It's, yes. a low, it's, a, it's a high mortality rate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if it, if it succeeds, you are... A god, <laughs> like you're. You are not just an ascending god. You are a great old yeah. god. You are an elder. Yeah. Being. Like, you know, well, it's... they're not. Yeah, they're ascended. Leave out oh, the no, god. Like, the lunar glaive would be more eldritch than the ascended gods of Quentos. Which is an important thing to point out is the fact that the old gods are not celestials. No, they're not. They're eldritch beings. They have. Some links that they forged over time with the like the um, Robosa the, and the celestial realms, but they themselves are not celestial beings. No, their planet was destroyed by the Void Dragon. This Eldritch and planet. yeah, yeah. So that's a very like clear thing to, to put in there is that they are not actually in the purest sense of it they Celestials. are gods by name <laughs> they, they are gods by name god. and yes they chose yeah exactly they chose to become gods um but you also look at it on the other hand you have the bloody dame who chose to become a demon essentially yeah um absolutely and then chose to become god that after that because it fit the purpose it fit the purpose exactly exactly they're yeah so I think that it's a very interesting um, just just to look into that side of things because usually there's the the thought that they like celestials gods they go hand in hand um, not always not always um, but yeah just just to go back a bit and discuss the the Quella gods um, okay but let's talk about Quella gods a bit more what's that sir let's talk about Quella gods yeah to go into that. Did we have? I can't remember if we've discussed on stream about what happened essentially to the Quella Gods post uh, War of the Gods. So post War of the Gods, we we have talked about this. Um, yeah, we've so talked about it. And um, the Quella Gods, they did not. They were designed with not the intent of wanting to create more, because they knew the effect of what happens when these old beings do it. So they were like they were sent back to slumber they're they are now sent almost as like the 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 doomsday button like the doomsday prevention button of the sentry dragons is waking the queller gods now or what's mm -hmm. intended to be it's like this this happens they're like they're the last line of defense for the cosmos not just like a planet like mm -hmm. if, if something can affect the cosmos they will intervene but they are asleep on the land of of um Zarthel. it's they are they're mm -hmm. sleeping one of the moons there have sealed themselves like they reckon like they are also split soul and body but their souls know where to find their bodies to try and re-pilot mm -hmm. it so to speak if need be because they know that a situation if it has happened once before will happen again it's it's an inevitable yes. so they need to be ready for that inevitability um mm -hmm. And I think it's very interesting because we talked about the moons and it's one I don't think we touched on too much because we wanted to save it for this stream. That's yes. where they slumber. 
So yep. one could gain a lot of power if you manage to make that moon and steal some of their power. Um, which I think would make a really interesting also, character. Also incredibly dangerous. <laughs> also incredibly fucking dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which I think is for Zarthel, actually. It's the moon by Zarthel is their yes. resting place. Um, They're slumbering. Um, so. um, which is an interesting point because they do come up a little bit um, in the rise of the Horn Serpent and the eventual turn into the Dragon King in that uh, in that they did attempt, they themselves couldn't fully commit to it because it wasn't their purpose, but they still recognized how dangerous they the situation was. To try and balance. So they sent demigods of theirs trying to balance it out. So they still played a role in the um, in trying to make sure that the old gods didn't go genocidal again yes. essentially um, which balance because the, once the dragon king absorbed the horn serpent absorbed the jewel wings the the chaotic nature was tempered by the lawful nature so it became a more of a mm -hmm. lawful evil being that we just wanted to rule also i want to say Ruff, will we just take a quick two minute break so we can both use the bathroom because i definitely gotta go yes absolutely uh, so we're gonna take a quick intermission we'll be back in like two minutes
Okay, we are back. Sorry for the short we intermission there. We are nothing if not not great old being, so we do require breaks upon occasion, and it's cold in Ireland, mm -hmm. so I wanted to grab a jumper. Um, so, we're talking... Oh, that is a uh, screen, that is. <laughs> Actually, you know, I have the gods around. People are curious. Pause mm -hmm. the video when this becomes a VOD if you want. I will go up on the YouTube soon. If there's any specific mm -hmm. gods you're interested in, we've got a lot of them here. Yep, there's a god for every occasion, and god for even occasions you hadn't even thought of. God, some of these bring back nostalgia. Yeah. Hey, Des, you just went past the uh, the, dying, the dying god up there. Uh, you said you got the name wrong. You said Guiding Light. I cast Guidance. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of... As you can see, there's a lot of gods. Um, you yes. don't want to overwhelm people, though, so... But the War of the Gods, we're talking about. Um, <laughs> yeah, talking about the War of the Gods. Get back to it. So if you're watching in chat, definitely a great time to throw out some questions because we're in the last sort of like we're yeah. in the last quarter of the show, the last legs, so to speak. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious about actually because I imagine that what like the initial once the war ended and the Quelly Gods completed their purpose and the mortal races were allowed to to resume like. Were they aided in any sense by the Quelligons, or did this like the scattered remnants scattered. of the various races? Did they just slowly have to piece the world back together bit by bit from what was there, type of thing? Yeah, that, that's a hundred percent. The Quelligons, once the war was over, it's like there was like time unfreezes, big ominous voice in the sky that says, <laughs> "Your gods have been placed behind barriers." Pray to them as you wish, but the war of the gods has ended. Seek peace for your own sake. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's how we have kingdoms forming based on like, you know, some people are like, I was one of the powerful champions of so-and-so god. And that's how a lot of animosity still formed. Like from the ones that weren't mind control, it's like you killed so many of my allies. You have these races forming, like, you know, these racial barriers between different kingdoms forming, like specifically like the um mm -hmm. like even just like s sects of people who thought there should be different worship based on how the approach like the star elves completely split into so many sects where there was the moon yeah. and the sun elves representing both sides of the dawn watcher being like you your faith led us to this like a lot of them blaming each other and a lot of like kingdoms forming off the backs of these and you know like even some kingdoms forming yeah. off the backs of like we were we were abused our mind was not our own mm -hmm. this was not right and atheist states form because like not that they don't believe in the gods it's like they believe the gods don't deserve their worship you know because at this stage there were still clerics who could get power and even like although they did phase fizzle out throughout the centuries you know there's things of like these gods don't deserve us like they they, mm -hmm. they made us but they don't deserve us how many of us died for their cause and yeah. you look at something like goblins specifically being one of them their god was killed yeah you know? yeah they're, that's they're they're they became good. godless yeah they became godless and they were very angry because goblins were like you know we were so heavily taken advantage of and you got what you deserved that's why we have no memory of the god of goblins because they're like we don't care to remember you you took advantage mm -hmm. of your power yeah which happens you know it's, which is quite a tragic so. quite a quite a tragic event i imagine for most of these uh, it, if you use just the two like humanity as a general term for most of humanity coming around to their senses after everything had happened like it would have been traumatic like the woe that that they knew they has been back completely, during a harsh winter yeah everything's been leveled like what they knew yeah. was left all their cities the ground. And grand palaces but it became like it also started like very much so like hunger games the cornucopia people that were close to the former capitals of these things trying to get artifacts because mm -hmm. like they weren't all just removed by like a lot like anything that could have restarted the war of the gods was taken you know by the 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 queller gods but yeah. there was also just this like artifacts of like, the gods you know yeah these mad dashes like well i remember that the like the troves of the dawn watcher were here and like people that were reawakened close to that it's like they became 
like some of the first awakened became the leaders of these new kingdoms because they were the first mm -hmm. ones to access these powerful magics it's like well you know this artifact i have you know the bow of the or like i have the, the hunter yeah the, the, bow spear. Of the huntress's spear like you know i have the bow mm -hmm. to her spear and i'm now setting up this like region it's like you know a lot of these people like became yeah. very influential people even if they weren't that influential before it's like there was a not limit of resources but a limit uh, like almost a finite supply of large artifacts and there was these ruins that became like especially like the leveled ones like these cities that were like built into mountains and completely crumbled or destroyed and then these smaller holds and keeps and like specifically as well some of the grave sites to the the gods that had died became areas to quick access power and somebody who in a previous life during the war of the gods may have spent their entire eternity at that stage powering in fear of eldritch beings fighting above their head and now has the capability to grant themselves the power to control their own future and perhaps the future for that of their kin and kind yeah which is another thing as well like not only was there dwindling artifacts and stuff like that there was dwindling magic essentially with the gods no longer being as present magic itself died out i mean although it was a slow process magic in the world died out generation over generation the there was less magic generation over generation born. yeah um which if it until eventually it hit the point in the in the era that we started playing the world actually where it had hit a sort of baseline level of magic in the world where it was like some it like very it even was very not small even now. it was like one in 40 people could even hope to cast a cantrip and it was some one in 400 that could even cast a first level spell yeah yeah and anything so above it, third level was almost unheard of yes so you hit this level this basically a point where it just like hit down there and just leveled out at this level that was so primitive to what yeah, had previously been. We saw a good been. advancement in like, um, like medicine, not so much technology mm. at that stage, that came down the line, but physicians became much more capable because yeah. there is no paladins to just lay on hands and cure disease. There's no clerics to cast restorations. You know, you're lucky well, if you yeah, get that's like, the thing, like how powerful clerics yeah like powerful clerics would have been seen as these great heralds of the gods like they would have been such important figures during heads this time. of churches if the heads of churches like that's the thing like powerful clerics would have literally just sat at the head of the church like that is the only place you would have found them but even um, like even a warlock even people who bargain for their yeah. power couldn't like because even their power that allows them to manipulate the weave around them there is little weave left to manipulate so even them, like the Elder yeah. Blast, like that would be like, you know, each person has a baseline ability regardless of like pact or anything. You know, they make these packs and the, the patrons delve in if there's a, a potential, but not everyone yeah, has that. Exactly. And I think very point of order. We also, in that era of the prosaic era of our world, it was what it was called, we never played above fourth level. No, we never hit fourth level. Intentionally, which I, I, is I would I would love to go back to that era of just that really low magic type of era. The low level as well, like you know, the low level low magic. I would really like to play in that again. I just that's just completely aside. I always love that. I always love that 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 type of campaign. Um, okay, I don't know if everyone in our group would. <laughs> no, no, I I like. I, I mean, I enjoy both, but I also do enjoy sort of a very low magic um, type of campaign. But actually, I think it'd be very interesting to play a, a, a campaign, or at least a limited uh, limited campaign, immediately after the War of the Gods, during that scramble for power and to rebuild. I think that would be a fascinating setting for to, to, to have a campaign set in that. It would be. It's such a climactic period that there's so much going on, so much that someone could do and achieve that it's very interesting. Um, yeah, it was basically like it was called the thaumaturgic era, but predominantly it was the age of free choice. Mm -hmm. There's no one now telling yeah. you what you can and can't do. So we see great, great boons of of charity, but we also see 
Well, there's no one to stop me from killing everyone who gets in my way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Of great heroes and villains. Yeah. I also wanted to touch on as well. Like, I imagine a lot of the different civilizations that formed themselves out of this would have had very different tellings of what happened during the War of the Gods, because most of them wouldn't have known, they wouldn't have had like a detailed series of events where they would like pull out a book and be like, yep, this is what happened on this date in the War of the Gods. You would have had these different societies. Yeah, you would have had different societies basically create their own myths and stories about what happened during the war itself. Like, you may have had some who were perhaps more influenced by the, the Eye of Rune, for example, creating stories that probably cast a lighter uh, picture on uh, what that side did or others which showed their chosen god in a better light and so you would have had a lot of different constructions of so you're what absolutely happened, correct you're which is just involved. it's such a important event as we discussed for a draft but also for the whole world and i think as well it would have had to, to connect it to the past however many streams we did it would have also had knock-on events for the whole cosmology of Quenthos um especially for those planes those worlds that drew a lot of their power from uh you know a, a, like uh, mortals and such uh like Zarkovid or Osiris um it would have caused dramatic shifts there and there would have been such a like a series for example the influx of new souls uh, that would have come in uh, and a lot of desperate people who would have bargained their their lives to devils in attempting to try and escape from all of this there would have been a sudden influx in people making packs and people making deals there would have been so much of that um and even in in Rivosa, in the land of angels, the amount of souls coming into the uh, to the to the graveyard or the afterlifes, um, yeah, you're, would have been so you're much. Right like it would have been, yeah. Which is which is why I think it's such probably the most important event um, in regards to the whole cosmology within a reasonable time span of events. Um, within a reasonable time span um because exactly. obviously are, you have correct. prehistoric events um but that's like beyond but that, that is a massive thing is like you would have a lot of these people who are like and i think even to the point where <laughs> there is probably in history of Durapidin some false retellings where it's like i was there but people were not there it's like mm -hmm. i experienced yeah. this and like you know people who wanted to try and get like mass reputation around them and like legitimized claims mm -hmm. to like kingdoms and stuff or cities or villages that became you know absorbed by kingdoms and whatever like nobility it's like I yeah. was my ancestor fought at the precipice of of mm -hmm. of um you know of well that's the grand master it's like yeah well that's the thing like i imagine that there could have been just someone who found sort of a relic of the dawn watcher and could have just easily spun if they were charismatic enough spun an entire story about yes my sort of father fought like alongside the, the dawn watcher as one of his champions and sort of died by his side in sort of one of their final battles type yes. of thing you could have had all of that absolutely um, you would have had people did... lying through their teeth <laughs> yeah uh, it was it was a time for opportunists that's the thing it it's was. such opportunity um, I do want to ask, actually, though, what was the the foundations? Because I know Grand Master dates back right to this period here. Like, it's one of the oldest Yeah, Grand Master was founded. So, so how did kingdom it was founded not much earlier after. So, oh, that's that's a reach. Grand Master was formed by a collection of the Master family who were basically, it's a human kingdom. They were actually mm. original loyals to the Eye of Ruin. Um... Oh. And the Master of Kingdom was founded due to... Is that why uh, it's such a shit place? <laughs> partly, yeah, partly. Um, but that's why we saw a lot of... Uh, even a US Parry, you knew that there was uh, grave sites of like the bloody David mm -hmm. and such around there. Because yeah. there was worship yeah. there. So they were they were worshippers of this. And basically it was some of the holds and ruins Grand Master was built upon. Because mm -hmm. it was like it was close enough to Singor which was the area that was so heavily tied Mate. to the Dawn Watcher. 
And the matron. And the matron. Then you have um. Oh god, this is a reach. What is the name of the stone elf, stone dwarf kingdom? I was like, my mind instantly went to Kaz. Kaz, correct? Was it Kazove? No, Kazove was. Kazove the... was close, but not it. Um, Kazove was close. It it was a dwarf and hold, but it wasn't the one. It was close. One second. Oh, I, um, Ralph, one second. I, I I got it. I got it. Uh, you were just witnessing stream, um, Des and I going into one of our absolute goblin brain moments where we both know something and we're desperately trying to find it about law. Um, oh jeez, what is it called? Oh. One second, I almost what have is it called? the folder. Oh, I'm ahead of you. You almost have it? Have it. Um, so it was the Cantharin, the Al Sardun, Krakkos, and Cantharic, which was the Arkhammer's Cantharic, location. Yes. Um, yeah. So you had the three, and you had two of the children of the Dawnwatcher's kingdoms there, but you obviously didn't have the Farwalker because he fled. Not the Dawnwalker, the Farwalker of the Dawnwalker. The Dawnwalker? Um, I quite like it, yeah. No. It's so difficult because these names were so many names, but you had that, like you had this is where their kingdom's mm. from. And that's why that's where the conflict stemmed from there and then it went out. But you'd also like the the Eye of Room was forced out of the Grand Master region where his human kingdoms were originally founded from. So the Master line actually dates back to the earliest followers of the of the mm. Eye of Ruin. And it was people right. who claimed like some of the old holds, like the Port Holarth, the capital of Grand Master, was built on the back of ruins of of the eye of the eye ruined um shit um you know yeah. the infrastructure the foundation you know it's, it dates back to them i i have to ask this is completely what not, nothing that stream would understand at the moment but was there something significant about the location that ravenwell was built on um significant no okay it was at a shit place by just being shared like it they had just no a shit place that like, it, it wasn't was, like the burial it, ground of something was, evil or something no it, wasn't it was the just a shit place evil. it was the nobility of oh, i can't remember the noble house of ravenwell's name um geez um i can see if i've got some i can pull it i have a book here if you really want this is such deep reaches and <laughs> um, <laughs> such deep reaches um, and it's just for us a hundred percent um um it's it's gonna hit me as soon as you say it it's gonna um second um i have all the the crime lords before i have the uh the nobility um, look as we know it's very much a serok situation the, the crime lords in the city basically ran the city um definitely did um, um Rem Velo. Velo, that's it. The Rem Velo it was the Rem Velo. Oh, Rem Velo, yeah, that's it. Um, no, I believe the house is Velo, but it was le led by Rem. Oh, Velo. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so the, the house is called Velo. Um, but the Velo family specifically is one of these opportunists that they came about by lying. They were like, "Look at what I did," and they didn't do anything. You know, it's like, I yes, I fought so hard, and like it's. It was a it was a city that was built on lies and deception, so it fell to such lies and deception, like almost like poetic yeah. justice, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. was never a good place. It was always like, well, I did all this good, so it's like you know, almost like if you want to stay in the justice and protection of the champion of one of the gods, you must pay tribute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very um, you know, extortionary. It was very like. There's a lot of danger out there, so you should pay protection to stay in the Velo, uh, the Velo Estates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's so, interesting. So I was born Ravenwell. May it not oh, rest in peace. May it be May destroyed. May it burn for eternity. <laughs> May it burn for eternity and the poor souls stuck in there find some form of peace. Besides you know the real shit people. I open up my this the first book I started writing this is the first book that Quintus took place. Not Quintus, Durapita and Quintus took place like, as a whole. And shout out to that book. Like, that book has taken us through sometimes. Look, it's um, it starts off with like maybe a stronghold city talk. Like it, it even has like the premise of it. It has like the first gods ever made, like the Firewalker, the Dawn Watcher, 
Uh, do you know the Matron of the Woods was originally going to be called the Mother of Forests? Really? The Mother of Forests? Nah, the Matron of the Woods is much better. Yeah, and the Lunar Light was originally the Eye of Ruins, pre-corrupted name. Huh. Can you, can you just repeat that for me? The Lunar Light. The Lunar the Light? Ruined. The Lunar Light? Fuck, I know yeah. this is some deep lore here. This is this, this is, is the book that, that you were going yeah. to send. Yeah, and then COVID and then postage. And then COVID, but I will get it. Actually, now's the perfect time to remind you this. Next time to remind you. But I even have the population breakdown. And then of course, the first the third page deep, the first person, the nobleman. Ill word. Of course. Of course. And then oh even the fixers. Enovir, his fixer, the assassin human, you've got the Count whose fixer was uh, Garth. Oh my the god, Garth. The Count and his lament. The Count and his lament. lament. The, the Count's lament. Um, oh, this is, so, this is so good. This is so Even the Mogan Scroll run by Trent is a front for it. The Castlin, which was the wet, named West, the Tiefling, and his fixer, Amesley. Fuck. I have Illawards backstory. I don't even know if I've ever read you Illawards and Theobald. Theobald was the original count before before Dax yep. Lysandras. Theobald was the first. And then... Fuck, fuck Dax. Just look. It's, it's just the compulsory. Uh, fuck, fuck, fuck Dax. Fuck Dax. Fuck Dax. Just, um, but even like the Dax. temples and he was Venerans or the Forge and Fire. I had all the city. This Because remember it was a city build. Like not city builder. City. Like here I have the um the village of Quint R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Um, do I talk about what happened? Look, never forget the Quint rest up there. And all my notes on the port city of Holar, literally like done page by page, that never got to it. Fuck. Which is wild. We never reached Port Holar. We never got to see Port Holar, and honestly, that is a crime. I demand a Port Holar one shot. Oh my god, just for us. But then, like, I, you hear where, like, the Swamp City of Pala, then, like, mm -hmm. the... It's just so... But I even have population right down for, like, as Sardoon, Cracked Pills, Goldport, mm -hmm. Woodport. Like, I have so much more stuff for each of the individual cities and, like, you know, less... I don't do this as much anymore because this is back when everywhere was information available and it's all surface level stuff but now it's more of a thing of like going back and discovering i do want to do this for um i do want to do this for a draft not to happen in quentus it just takes time See, the, it, the issue with quentus as well is that we're moving so quickly through history with it like there is big time jumps between each moment in history that we we need to hit a point with quentus where we can actually level out and have Dead certain Jesus. information as the current information. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, with such large time jumps as well between, um, like, big time jumps. It's just it would be like two campaigns down the line is completely irrelevant. Like, yes. imagine if we did this for all of Caselia settlements, and now Mantera Theory just goes yeah. yoink. Exactly, which is actually part of the thing is that recently going through the world affluent um updating stuff and changing stuff around i haven't been able to put in leaders because obviously that wouldn't make any sense to put in leaders that is currently in. changing as we speak it's currently changing and because next campaign may very well be what 100 years even in yeah, more even um so it's like there's no point putting leaders down so i think for everyone in the, who wants to know we're playing quintos the history of it essentially until we reach a point which puts it on the same level as where we were in the, the other half of the world. Absolutely. But Raph, I am noticing the time now, so I'm going to wind us down yes. to the last little bit of the stream where I do a little bit of shameless shilling for us. If you like what you saw, please consider following the channel. We got some followers. Thank you for people who follow today. Um, Donos are a great way to support us, but the best way to support us probably is our Patreon. You get some access to cool content, and if you liked what you saw, you, could, you get access to our World Anvil, which is where... All of this sort of stuff will go up eventually. We do act as quick as we can, albeit not perfectly. Um, I do need to do an update for this mm. week's uh, stuff, although I'll probably get to that Thursday. Um, but 
there is rewards on the Patreon for five bucks a month. You get access to classes and subclass subclasses and races and sub races we make, mm -hmm. and access to the world level. For ten dollars a month, you get access to the battle maps that you see over Monday. And like I just talked about, for 15 bucks a month, you get access to my behind the screen notes of how I run the sessions and what could happen and what are the knock on effects of what did happen. Um, other than that, following is great. Join us on our socials and join us on Discord. It's great to hang out with you guys and answer questions. Other than that, we're going to go ahead and raid out, but we'll see you on mm -hmm. Monday for the next game. Bye. Yeah, see you, everyone.